Recently, the strange-looking vehicle on the streets of China, with special mission on its body and antennas plugged into its roof, has aroused the public's curiosity. After Chinese netizens tirelessly tracked it down, they concluded that it was most likely a particular police vehicle that had been modified by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, to be equipped with a powerful radio signal that could block all types of cell phones and radio signals on a wide range of channels. It can block remote control, walkie-talkie, GPS, Beidou, Galileo and GLONASS navigation, positioning and satellite phones, flight control band that can interfere with drones, wireless map transition band, and drone navigation band. While Communist China has a massive official media presence and strict control over online media, in an age where everyone has a cell phone, Chinese people have developed a habit of taking pictures of whatever they like and posting them on their social media. It has led to information that the government does not want to disclose, such as scenes of catastrophic incidents being filmed by the public and circulated outside of Communist China through various means. Circulation of such images is regarded as having smeared the country, the government, and the party. It means that there are loopholes in the work of Chinese surveillance authorities. Given the recent upsurge in breaking events in China, the particular mission vehicle should have emerged in this context. Maybe it's too hard for the CCP to control the Chinese people as a whole, and now it requires all kinds of new, giant devices. Fanny 马上上开 in addition to special vehicles and drones, cameras are the most commonly used surveillance equipment in Communist China. In addition to outdoor cameras, indoor cameras are almost everywhere. Here is a school teacher. Count how many cameras are around. There are eight. Do Chinese people have privacy in their cars or minivans? Not necessarily. So if the Chinese don't have a camera at home or in the vehicle, can they escape the CCP's remote surveillance?
。所有拨打的地方，还有号码，还有时长，都可以监控得到。所以以后打电话不能乱讲话了，好可怕呀、啊！ Not only does the CCP spy using cell phones and landline phones, but the TV at home may also be a way for the communist regime to spy on its people. In a recent post on the V2X website, a Chinese citizen said, "My TV is spying on all connected devices." He discovered that a data service on his TV scans all connected devices, even his neighbor's information, every ten minutes. He said. The TV is Android. I caught it and did some research. I found that it scans my family's internet-connected devices every 10 minutes, sends back the host name, MAC, IP, and even the network latency time, and detects the surrounding Wi-Fi, SSID names, and MAC addresses packaged and sent to this domain, gz-data.com. In other words, what smart devices in the home? Whether the cell phone is in or out of the home, who has come to the home to connect to the internet, and what is the name of the surrounding neighbor's Wi-Fi, can be collected and uploaded at any time. The company this citizen mentioned is Beijing Gozhen Data Technology Co. It's the first big data company for big smart screens in communist China. By the end of 2018, it had covered 103 million smart TV terminals in China. Accounting for 55 percent of the total number of online devices. As of April 2019, Gozhen Data has entered into long-term strategic partnerships with Skyworth, Kuka, TCL, Sanyo, Toshiba, Philips, and other manufacturers to collect first-hand smart TV data, implanting SDKs in the system later. In 2003, the CCP's modern surveillance plan. Began with the Golden Shield project, operated by China's Ministry of Public Security. It included rigorous network censorship and physical surveillance. In total, more than 200 million cameras have been installed in public and private locations on mainland China under the Safe City, Skynet, and Sharp Eyes projects. The Communist Party's massive surveillance projects have spawned a number of related businesses that sell cameras and video management software. A recent study was co-sponsored by Jessica Badka, a former U.S. State Department analyst, and Marik Alberg, a senior fellow with the Asia Program at the German Marshall Fund of the United States. It combed through more than 76,000 procurement announcements for surveillance equipment and services from government agencies across Communist China from 2004 to 2020. The analysis shows that surveillance spending has become a significant part of many cities' budgets. From 2010 to 2019, the number of procurement announcements for surveillance-related equipment and services increased nearly 19 times. The communist government has also introduced the concept of quote, "predictive policing" end quote, as portrayed in the Hollywood blockbuster *Minority Report*, in which Chinese police try to use big data analysis, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence tools to locate potential key individuals involved in terrorism, explosives, and other crimes. According to the CCP's Ministry of Public Security, the project aims to improve the people's sense of security. However, many analysts question the usefulness of predictive policing in improving social security. Our internet computing can be done to do a network cleanup. Don't do it. You can get access to every gen in the city. The ability to get data from the city is very strong. What can we do in the defense? If you are a key worker, when you walk in the street, your face, for example, this face is a little revealing, you can do it immediately. And this is five years ago. The communist regime's vast array of surveillance equipment and predictive policing have not yet shown any significant effect in solving the severe problem of missing persons in China. So these measures are more likely being used to further surveillance of communications and to increase the crackdown on the Chinese people, the petitioners and dissidents. On March 9th, Communist China's media reported that a Chinese company. 
XForward AI had won first place in the U.S. NIST FRVT face recognition test for masks. It is excellent news for the Chinese government. However, given the usual quality problem of China-made products, it is reasonable to question how many of the Chinese-made surveillance products actually work. The Chinese officials do not release any public data in this regard.